Remember to breathe, cause it'll take your breath away when the engines cough and you blast off. Ignite the night with a firecracker flash. Remember to live, cause you got Hello, I'm Axel MC131 and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. And uh, it's been a bit of a hectic week for me, and I haven't gotten the chance to play very much of this game, but it is Friday. Fancy Fancy Friday, so we are back for the next episode, and we are today going to be launching the wonderful Discovery 1, and I've got this thing set up on the launch pad here, and you may notice something very strange about my camera, and that's because I am using the wonderful camera tools, which you may have actually noticed sitting in my t toolbar um, for some of the last, like, three or four episodes, because uh, I've been mucking around with that. I don't really have any objectives in mind for it, I just wanted to try it out. It's very fun for flying planes and stuff, but uh, it's also quite cool for launches, so I thought I might as well launch this one with it. So, uh, this is the Discovery 1 proper launch in a 3, 2, 1 to start the main engines. Fire it up, and launch in a 3, 2, 1. Oh yeah! She's so pretty. A lovely camera zoom there. Up, up, into the sky! Alright, enough of that. We are here with the Discovery 1, and we are now on our way up, so I should be paying attention to flying this thing. But you guys have actually seen the launch for this before in the simulation last week. Well, last week? Yeah, it technically was a week ago that I uploaded the last video. Uh, so, I'm probably going to speed the rest of this up, so enjoy the mission. Alright, and we are back, and the second stage is almost completing its uh, first main burn, and that is going to put the Aquaps into 80 kilometers. I don't think we'll have a periaps up, I don't know, but when this gets to 80, I'm going to cut throttle. Ooh, there we go, and we do in fact have a periaps at that point. 12 kilometers. Fabulous. So, we are now going to set a maneuver up here, and we're going to continue into orbit. Our maneuver node. Whoop. How much? About 60 meters per second. Sweet. That's uh, rather nice. Now, I don't think we're going to have a huge amount of fuel left in this. Ugh, not really. Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. But uh, it'll be enough to put uh, our orbit around, I suppose. It's going to be a two second burn, apparently, but I think that's a max throttle, so probably we'll be, we'll be doing a little bit longer than that. So let's just time warp around to that point. Because once we are in orbit, everything's perfectly fine. So there's 20 seconds away. Come on, a little closer. Whoop, three seconds away. Okay. Point at about prograde and burn gently, gently. There we go. And... Whoop. Eh, 79 by 80. That's close enough. Okay, hold. Hold position, and we have a very small amount of fuel, but I think it's going to be enough. So, the next uh, thing to do is going to be flip this around, and I've changed one thing, which is, uh, well, two things technically, which I didn't actually show earlier, which is that I've removed the decoupler, and I'm just using the, um, uh, the, the docking port as a decoupler, because you can do that, and I've also made the, uh, I forced the shroud to be disabled for this engine here, so it's not going to have, we're not going to have a random part in our way, but I think we can still decouple here, so let me just make sure that we can. Yes, we can. Okay, good. I'm just going to set that as my target, engage RCS, and just burn forwards a little, and control from here. And this should be way easier than last time, because we don't need to knock anything out of the way. We literally turn around, 180 degrees, point back at our target vector, and then burn forwards again. That has got to be the easiest docking I've ever done in the history of Kerbal Space Program. Well, 
that's that. So we are now ready to depart for the moon, and I'm just going to quick save at this point. Um, since this is our full mission now, no longer the simulation, so where is... Oh, there's the observer one. Where is the moon? There it is. So we're going to set that as our target. What is our nose? 0.2 degree. Uh, uh, I prefer to be a little bit less inclined than that, but that's alright. So we're going to set our maneuver here. And there we go. Let's maneuver up to that. Whoa! Ooh, that's a fancy maneuver. Okay, let's try and remember which way we want to go for a free return trajectory. Like that. Hmm. Actually, we don't really need to be in a free return trajectory because we're going to be all entering orbit around the moon, so we want to be as low as possible. 40 kilometers. That's pretty good, actually. I think I'm going to go with that. It's an 858 meters per second burn. Uh, and we've got a little bit of that in there. Now, I believe... I did some calculations for this. Uh, this fuel tank will give this the orbiter stage s about 750 meters per second, and then it's got another 400 and something left in that. So, hopefully we should be able to get to the moon. And then I noticed that... I calculated that if we use up all the fuel and then have um, uh, monopropellant, we get another, like, 250. But that's in case of emergencies. So I'm hoping that we can do this without um, ending up to need uh, needing monopropellant. But we're just going to make sure we're pointing at the node, and then we're going to time warp around to the right side. So... Alright, node's coming up in just 40 seconds. We are behind the sun now. So... Wow, that was slow. Okay, so let's... Hope you can see that. Can you see it silhouetted, sort of? Yeah. So let's just make sure we're pointing in the right direction, which is... Uh, hang on, let me make sure that I'm controlling from... I'm pointing the wrong way. I need to be controlling from there. Okay. <laughs> I need to flip around the other way. Let's just give a little bit of RCS kick. We might as well, considering that if you have monopropellant and rocket fuel, it's actually more efficient to use your less efficient fuel first, and that is the monopropellant. So I'm just going to slowly rotate, and by the time we get there, we'll be about ready to start the burn. In fact, we might be a little late, but that's alright. It's only about a few seconds. Okay. Slow down. Whoa. Point at the node. Manually fudge that. There we go. And start to burn. Now, this is going to run out of fuel fairly quickly. Yeah, we've already used half of what was left. But it should be enough, so I'm actually going to turn the RCS off now. Whoop. And six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Ditch that. No? Ditch that. There we go. Okay. Now we turn back around. Control from here. Should know how to do this now. Fire up the LV-909. And carry on from there. Now the burn is going to be about a minute. Oh god, let's turn our SAS back on before I start losing masses of efficiency by pointing in the wrong direction. Um, now we are going to have to uh, keep pumping the fuel in manually. I tried to come up with a fix. I realized also that the reason I was not getting a fuel flow is not because I had the decoupler. Well, I guess suppose the decoupler. I tried to, like, enable... You can actually enable crossfeed for the decouplers now in the editor. Um, that didn't fix it because there is also a heat shield here, and the heat shields also do not allow crossfeed and you can't toggle it. So I had to, I tried to make do by putting like a fuel line that went from the capsule to the service stage here, but it, it just wouldn't place because of the, because of the way the geometry of the ship at the moment, it wouldn't allow it to actually um, connect the parts. So I am forced to do this manually. But while we've got fuel there, let's just check our position. All right, that's doing pretty good. We are still pointing at the node. Let's shove some more fuel into this stage. Alright, come on. Moon encounter. Preferably a low one. Oh! Okay, there's a moon encounter. Let's, uh... Have a look over here. Let's get that lower, and lower, 200, 100, and whoop, 38, that'll do me. 
Let's just focus on view over here. We're probably going to need to do an inclination change. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I think I might do an inclination change just to make sure that I'm in an, a perfectly equatorial orbit, and I can do that with the RCS, so that'll actually make my, the rest of my mission more efficient. But, I should still have plenty of fuel in... Oh, well, I don't have plenty of fuel. I have... <laughs> it's, it's like, almost not worth keeping that, but I know that it's actually going to be more efficient to have that with me. <laughs> That's interesting. We've got less than a unit of liquid fuel, so this is going to be a fun mission. Because that means I'm going to have to do all the orbital insertion with this. But let's just turn this engine off for the moment to make sure I don't do anything accidentally. And we will set up a correction burn at the ascending node, considering it's going to be a uh, normal or anti-normal burn. So which way are we coming up on it? Hang on, I just need to do a little bit of... Oh, screw it. I'm not going to do math. I'm going to do trial and error. What happens if I burn down? It goes flatter. Okay, that's what I want. Whoomp. Okay, so it's going to be a 1.5 meters per second burn. Let's just point at it. Downwards. And we can literally do that with the RCS. So we are going to now time warp up to that point. So... Alright, here we are. We're pretty much at the maneuver, so I'm just going to tap the RCS, and I want to be burning by pressing H to burn forwards with RCS, so H, and we're flat. Okay, perfectly equatorial orbit, and our descending, ascending and descending node should now be zero, that's pretty good. So turn the RCS back off, and here we are. Jeb is on his way to the moon. He is not only going to be the first Kerbal to fly by the moon, but... If everything checks out, he'll be the first Kerbal, Kerbal to orbit the moon. So, uh, yeah, let's quick save again. Because why not? And time warp some more. Alright, here it comes. Whoop. It's a very, very nice that it, or the time warp automatically slows down when you enter a sphere of influence. Alright, now I need to check uh, our retrograde button. Whoops. I don't want to click on the moon, I want to click on the periaps marker and add a maneuver. Thank you, game. Now we're going to burn retrograde there. How long is that going to take? We're getting a circular orbit. Do we need to be in a circular orbit? Circular? I can't, can't speak. Circular. About 300 meters per second. That's more than I would have liked, but oh well. We haven't done this massively efficiently. Uh, but I think that we've got that in this stage. It's going to be a half our fuel. So something tells me we're going to run out of fuel for this, but I'm not, I'm not too bothered about that. Because it's designed that if that happens, we can just send up a fuel tank. So I'm not bothered. But uh, our maneuver is going to be a six second burn. Apparently, in about eh, however long that is, an hour. So we're going to point at the node, make sure we're controlling from here. I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to accidentally be controlling from the wrong point now because I have so many docking ports around this. And we'll time warp down. It's probably going to be a little bit... Actually, I don't know. It might be a little bit shorter than that, but we'll see. Although I am going to have to ditch the uh, external fuel tank halfway through to maximize our efficiency. So we're probably going to end up with a little bit more delta V than I've calculated. I'm not sure. But we'll see. So I might start burning a little early. So we'll burn with about... Whoa! 30 seconds to go? Well, that's... We'll go in about 30 seconds, yeah. So I'll start burning. Just burn off the rest of that fuel. Oh, it's on the night side again. Lovely. Let's point retrograde. And then hold. And we'll turn the engine back on. And fire up. Use just enough fuel to empty that external tank. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to rotate and just fling it off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, tank. You have served me very well. And now we'll throttle back up. It has been a pleasure serving with you. Haha, <laughs> because it's a service tank. Ah, uh, bad pun. Right. Retro burn. Activate. Oh, we are now in orbit. Okay, uh, do I want to get this lower? It's actually really tempting to say no. Because if I leave the orbit like this, I can get low and high orbit science. Because I didn't get high orbit science earlier. I can stick around the moon for a bit. And it's going to be way more efficient when I do my orbital... Well, I suppose ejection burn. I don't know what I can't remember what the term for it is. Um, orbital escape, uh, escape burn, I suppose, because it's going to be here going that way. So it's going to take much, much less because this is so close to being out of the moon's sphere of influence anyway. So I think I'm going to sit there. And Jeb, you should have entered orbit around the moon. 
World first milestones. We've entered orbit of the moon. Damn, yes, we have. There we go. Contract complete. 70,000 funds and six science. Ah, what the hell was that that just flew past? That was the word space, I think. Uh, I think that may have been a bug. Whoa. That freaked me out a little bit. I thought it was a piece of my spacecraft. Okay. <laughs> well, Jeb, you're here, so uh, we're going to time warp uh, up to the sun. And we'll get some sun on this so that we can see what's going on now. Here we are. We are here at the moon. And I'm just going to rotate the spacecraft up uh, so that we can collect stuff. And it's time to do science. Now, Jeb can only do one science experiment at a time. I decided to send Jeb up rather than a scientist because I didn't want a probe core on this. So we're going to get... Can we get low orbit science? That's currently high over the moon. Ah, dang. Alright, well, how many... Do we have two mystery goo units? Yes, we do. Okay, well, I'm going to try and get both. I don't know if we can get much more science left. 3.6 for high over the moon. Alright. But the big scoring is going to be EVAs. EVA report from high over the moon. 16 science. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to store that. We will... Can we do a temperature report? We... Oh, can only be controlled externally by a scientist. And I think that we've actually got as, just about as much science as we can from those. So we're going to get Jeb off here. Just fly down here and grab one of those mystery goos. Collect data. Remove data. This is why we have two of them, of course. So we can do one low and one high. And we'll save the, the materials bay for low science. So we're going to do a full orbit at least. Uh, so we'll store that experiment, we're going to board, and we're going to do a crew report now. Whoop, let me just turn SAS back on. Ten science, wonderful. And that we can tra we can actually uh, transmit, so let's actually review the report and transmit that. Away you go, little antenna. Do your work. Let's use a little bit of power, but we've got solar panels, and we've got lots of batteries. We've performed a spacewalk in orbit of the moon. Oh, that's a nice milestone. 15,000 funds for that, and another science. How are we doing for funds at the moment? Oh, yeah, almost 400,000. All right, so that is uh, our first little bit of science done. Uh, let me just make sure that we have, we've already got the barometer and thermometer. Yes, we have. I just wanted to make sure. I like having them on my spacecraft, like, by default after a certain point, because I, there's always, like, the bit where you're like, hey, how come I haven't got this science? And it's just nice to have them. So we're going to go up uh, a little bit and then come back down. Time warping around and come back to low orbit. I think we might actually leave Jeb in orbit for a bit, because, honestly, I'm going to have to wait a few orbits to do the return properly. Um, but now we are... Are we actually in low orbit? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, crew report. Oh, we are near the moon. Okay. Keep the data from the crew report. Materials bay. Observe. Mystery goo. Observe. Wow, okay. 5.3, 75 science. Oh, hell yes. And now we do the EVA. How many biomes can we get for this? EVA report from above the moon's highlands. 24 science and store. Come on, change biome. Still highlands. All right, we're going to jump down here. Whoa, that was pretty sweet. A little bit of conservation of momentum there. Collect data, remove data, and jump up and get down and grab the other mystery you. Collect data, remove data. Thank you. And we're going to store all of that in here once we get the option to. Thank you. Store experiments. And now we are going to fly back up here. Grab. Can we do any more EVA reports? Midlands. There we go. There's another biome. Store. You can't really see much. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'll turn the light on on this little spacesuit so you can kind of see. EVA report. Still Midlands. Come on. Give it a little bit of time. Still Midlands. Okay, it's going to be the Grasslands game all over again. Right, let's turn the SES back on. We're going to actually transmit that crew report. Very nice, because we've got plenty of battery power. Away the data goes to the KSC. 15 science added. That's wonderful. Okay, uh, let's get you out again, see if we can get any more EV reports. Still Midlands. On. Still Midlands. Ah, typical. Uh, can we go a little bit further? Just time warp a little bit. We've now passed Periaps. Another EVA report. Still Midlands. Ah, well. We'll leave that for another time, I think. 
um, for another mission. We've got two EVA reports, and they're worth, like, what, 24 science each? So I'm pretty comfortable with that. But yeah, so now the problem is that our orbit is in a weird position. Yeah, I said position. What are you going to do about it? Um, which means that we want this, this oval here to be, like, at right angles to the tangent of the moon's orbit. What does that mean? Does that mean anything to you guys? Y you know what I mean. So that when we burn at periapsis, it's going to be most efficient, which means we want the moon to be about here. So we've passed that point already. So I'm thinking that we may have to let it come around again. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Um, we should have plenty of fuel for it. Um, because we've done this the way we have. But I think that we may do that in the next episode, and then continue from there. But uh, so far, the mission has been absolutely a 100% success. I'm quite happy with Jeb. He's done well. He has piloted this thing to perfection, and the SAS is off. Okay, maybe you haven't piloted to perfection, but you've done pretty good, you know? <laughs> you've done good, Jeb. You've done good. But, uh, yeah, so I think we'll carry on with this mission in the next episode, I think. Is this engine off at the moment? It is. I shut it down. I couldn't remember shutting it down. Okay, well, uh, we'll carry on in the next episode, but until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been AxelMC131, and I'll see you next time.